Many experts, including Tony Sieber, have predicted for years now that electricity would go below zero. It would be in the minus. And eventually, what's just happened here in Victoria, in Australia, will happen all across the world. Now keep in mind, 90% of the world's population live in the Sun Belt. How long will it take before electricity is at marginal cost or almost free in the Sun Belt across the Sun Belt locations? Well, not long. Many experts are saying it will happen in less than 10 years for hundreds of millions of people living around the world. Victoria was possibly the first state in the world to have negative electricity prices. How does this even happen? How can you have negative electricity prices? Well, this is what happened. And this is what will happen in many countries around the world over the next few years. It's going to become more and more common as we see the price of wind and solar continue to fall through the floor and the outlay of these technologies increase exponentially. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking. My name's Sam Evans. It's great to see you. The state of Victoria, which is my hometown in Australia, is the first state to experience negative wholesale electricity prices for an entire week as high wind and solar output and mild demand pushed price below zero. The thing is, there's a lot of solar in Victoria in terms of rooftop solar, but nowhere near as much as there is in New South Wales or Queensland, in Australia, that is. So this feat is quite incredible. In fact, for months of last year, electricity in Victoria was actually half the price of its neighboring eastern seaboard states, New South Wales and Queensland. How can that be? Well, I made a video about that. I'll put a link in the description. The Australian Energy Regulator in its latest quarterly wholesale market report says that in the week starting December the 11th, the average price of Victoria was minus $1.64 per megawatt hour. Average weekly prices fell as the quarter unfolded due to low demand coupled with higher wind and large scale solar output over the quarter, it said. This was particularly pronounced in Victoria where prices fell to a record low negative average weekly price of minus $1.64 per megawatt hour in the week starting the 11th of December. You're probably wondering, why is it that I didn't get a rebate, a credit from my electricity provider? Well, unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. But if you get solar panels, it will work that way. This was due to low demand resulting from long daylight hours, increasing rooftop solar output, mild weather conditions together with particularly strong wind output in that week. The crazy thing about all of this is, this is going to happen very frequently in the future because Victoria is building out solar farms and wind farms at a much faster pace than ever before. Combine that with solar panel prices coming down massively, more Victorians installing solar on their homes and huge battery packs being deployed. I'm talking massive grid scale Tesla battery packs being built out right now in Victoria. There'll be enormous amounts of wind and solar generation with battery backup. It's going to mean we're going to see many, many weeks, if not months of the year in future, be at a negative price. This is the first time the regulator said there has been a negative average weekly price. Noting that spot prices can fall below $0 per megawatt hour when there is low demand and a high amount of cheap generation on offer, but not for this long. A week is a long time to have negative prices for that entire period of time. The report notes that average prices remained high in the fourth quarter, at least compared to the same period in earlier years, thanks to coal and gas. Peaker plants charging more money on hot days in the middle of summer. But like the Australian energy market operator, it observed a growing north-south divide in prices between the coal-dependent states of Queensland and New South Wales versus Victoria, Tasmania and South Australia, which are becoming less and less dependent upon coal. In fact, South Australia has zero dependency upon coal. On the mainland, there was a price divide between the northern regions and the southern regions, with Queensland and New South Wales recording higher average quarterly prices than Victoria and South Australia, it said. This is at least partly due to the record number of negative price events, which totaled 3,629 instances of negative 30 minute prices. Three quarters of those negative prices were in Victoria and South Australia and were due to low demand during the day as a result of increased rooftop solar output coupled with higher wind and large scale solar output driving prices down. 
What's one way you can get around these electricity prices? Well, obviously installing solar, but your solar panel is only going to work during the day. Adding battery storage, which is now cheaper than it's ever been, is a really good option. Tesla Powerwalls have come down in price massively over the past couple of weeks in Australia. Consider that. BYD have their own power walls. There's other versions. Personally, I'd probably go with either BYD or Tesla power walls because they use lithium ion phosphate batteries. LG Chem, or the battery packs that are used in Hyundai and General Motors cars. You can buy batteries from them too, but they were subject to a recall because there was a lot of fires with their batteries. Heaps, I'm not saying that in an alarmist way, but it's true. They recalled 14,000 energy storage batteries in Australia last year. So probably go for the LFP batteries from Tesla or BYD. Then you can avoid having to pay for energy period in Victoria or in Australia as well. Thanks for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Bye-bye.